Hey guys, Steve here from Nostalgia, putting a video together to show you guys how to get PSP running on your PlayStation Classic hack. For the purposes of this video, what I'm going to be doing is showing you guys how to do it as if you are doing a clean install on a new USB stick. But if you already have an existing build, don't worry, I will show you guys at which point in the video that it will be applicable to you because it is the same method either way. So, what we're going to need to do is make sure that we've downloaded our BleemSync 0.4.1 file, and I will provide a link for that in the description if you haven't already done so. We're also going to need our boot menu bundle, and again, I will provide a link to that in the description below. Next, we need to download the core for the PlayStation Portable emulator. I will provide a link to this as well in the description below, and it's right on the Mod My Classic website. So we're going to go ahead and download the PlayStation Classic PPSS PP Core. And I'm going to save that right to my desktop. It's a very small file. It doesn't take long at all to download. Now that it has, I'm going to minimize my window. And I'm going to move this right over to the middle. And I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to extract it to its own folder right on the desktop. So here it is. We don't need the zip file anymore, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that. And now, as you can see, I've got my three working files that I'm gonna need for this installation. The next thing that we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we've done is we've got a USB drive plugged in to our computer, which I already do. You need to make sure that it is formatted as FAT32 and that it is labeled as Sony in all caps. I've already previously done this as well as that, I've loaded up all of my PlayStation Portable games onto it. So you can see there's an RA Games and then a PSP folder in there. Inside, I've got my PSP games that are there. The reason I've done this in advance is because it does take a little bit of time for those games to transfer from your computer onto the memory stick. So here is our memory stick labeled Sony. And what we're going to do is we need to open up our BleemSync 0.4.1 folder first. I'm going to go ahead and copy all the files in here with the exception of the BleemSync folder. I don't need that for this. And that'll just take a few seconds to transfer over. Now that that's done, we're going to close this and we're going to open up our boot menu bundle folder. And very much like we did in the previous folder, we're going to copy everything here and we're going to copy it over to our USB drive on the root. You will notice towards the end of the transfer that it's going to say that there are four or five files that have the same name and what do we want to do with them. For the purposes of this, what we need to do is make sure that we override them and that we replace the existing files with the new ones. So we're going to replace the files in the destination. And now that's done. So we no longer need our boot menu bundle folder. Next, what we need to do is we need to open up our core folder and inside that core folder you're going to see that there is only a retro arc folder this is the point where if you've already got an existing build that this is where you're going to be jumping in so if you've already got an existing build plug your usb drive into your computer and open it up it'll look very much like this except without that ra games folder what we need to do is we need to copy the retro arc folder from the core folder that we had just downloaded onto the root of our USB. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy it over. And there is a configuration file in there that it's going to ask us if we want to replace. And the answer to that is yes. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that. And now we're done on the computer. The only thing that you'd be left to do is load any of your PlayStation Portable games directly onto your USB drive. You can either put them directly onto the root of the drive or you can categorize them and put them in folders like I've done with my RA games folder. If you were to double click on that, I've got a PSP folder, but if I wanted to load N64 games on there, I would have an N64 folder or a Super Nintendo folder or a Nintendo folder or whatever it happens to be. One thing I do want to mention is when you override that RetroArch folder, you are going to erase all but three cores. So if you had a Super Nintendo core on there already, you will have to re-add it after you've moved that folder over. The only cores that are provided in this uh, transfer are going to be a Nintendo 64 core, a PlayStation core, and a PSP core. But that's all that we've got to do on our USB drive and on our computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and 
eject my USB drive. I'm gonna pop it into my PlayStation Classic and then we're gonna go ahead and make that switch. All right, guys, so here we are. We are in front of our boot menu. We're gonna go ahead and enter into RetroArch. One thing I do wanna to mention to you guys is I currently have a PS4 controller as well as my PlayStation Classic controller plugged in through a four port USB hub. The reason I've done this is because as you guys know, the PlayStation Classic controllers do not come with analog and a lot of uh, PSP games do require you to play with analog. So the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is we need to go over to our input section and we need to set our PS4 controller as our primary controller. So we're gonna go ahead into input and we're gonna scroll all the way down to input user one binds. And under user one device type, we have to press the right key, the right directional pad button to select a retro pad with analog. And the user one device index, you can see there it says PlayStation Classic controller. As soon as I press any button, it will switch over to my um, PS4. So you can see as soon as I press the right key, you can see Sony Computer Entertainment Wireless Controller. Um, as soon as you've made that change, it automatically knows, um, I guess it's pre-configured to know which buttons should be linking up properly. So everything is, uh, all the buttons respond the way that they're supposed to. Um, but if you do want to remap any buttons, you can go ahead and do that. And it does explain to you what each button is. Your start button in this case will be my options button. My select will be my share button, things like that. So other than that, we're good. My controller is now working properly. I'm using my analog stick on my PS4 controller to navigate through these menus. So I know that they are functioning the way that they are supposed to. And the next thing that we need to do is load the PSP core. So we're gonna go ahead to load core. And as I mentioned earlier, you're only going to get three cores on here. If you want more cores, you just have to add them into the appropriate folder on your USB drive but we're gonna go ahead and load up our PPSS PP core. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the FPS on the bottom of the page. You can see that it's currently running 59.5 and it fluctuates a little bit. And the reason why I'm gonna leave those there is because we'll be able to see um, if there are certain games that are not running on the proper FPS, uh, which will substantially impact the playability of the game. So. Now that we've got our core loaded up, all we need to do is load up a game. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the X button to load up a game uh, on con load content, and then I'm gonna start the directory. And what we need to do is we need to go to our media folder, which is going to be our USB drive. And then we just need to find my RA games folder. So I've got that right here. And then I've got my PSP folder. And you can see I've got a bunch of games in here. A bunch of them I've tested, some of them I haven't. Um, I would say that a good 50 to 60% of them are not playable and it's, likely because the, I don't have all the settings set up properly, um, but we also know that any game that requires a little bit more out of the hardware is going to struggle a little bit. Uh, there's a couple games in here that work fantastic and I will show you guys those. Uh, and the first thing I'm actually gonna show you guys is a game that I know works is the uh, Dragon Ball Z Shin Bodokai. So I'm gonna press X on that and then I'm going to select the PPSS PP Core. So you can see on the bottom, the FPS is running. We're running a little bit lower than we'd like, but it's not horrible. It's certainly still playable. What you will find with some of the PlayStation Portable games is that when you've got videos that are playing on screen, I find that they tend to be the ones that have the most amount of issues. Um, in the case of this game, it actually is playing really well. It, uh, it doesn't seem to have any hiccups. Um, the sound doesn't seem to be having any glitching, um, but the game actually looks like it's in pretty good shape right now for this emulator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and skip past all this. And I'm just going to start up a fight. So we're just going to go ahead and leave my name as the letter A. We'll save. And we'll get started. We're just going to do an arcade. Go on easy. And I'm just going to select a fighter. We'll be Broly against Cell. Enjoy this. Round one. 
and it seems to be doing pretty good. I'm not quite sure what the buttons are, so bear with me for a second. There we go. The game feels pretty good. You can see that there's a little bit of glitching happening towards the bottom of the screen, but nothing that's going to really affect your playability. So we know that for sure the games aren't going to be playing 100% as if you were playing them on a PSP, but they're certainly playable and there aren't any major issues, at least with this game right now. I will show you a bunch of other games that are just not even, like you, you can't even get past the the main start menu. It's It's so bad, so, but yeah. As you can see, this game looks and plays quite well. And there's a bunch of games that play reasonably well, um, but as I said, there's a ton of games that just, you won't even want to try to play them. So in order to exit the game, we're going to go ahead and press the start and select button at the same time, and that's going to access our quick menu. And we're just going to close the content. Now we're going to have to reload our core. So I've reloaded the core and we're going to try another game. So I'm just going to scroll down and find my folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a game that does not work so well. Let's try God of War just to show you guys that. So as you can see here, it is painfully slow. We're still sitting on the warning menu and it's been like that for uh, a good 10 or so seconds. And you can see here now we're starting to fade away and this is all just glitching. You're, there we go. We're running at 5.2 frames per second. Uh, this is one of those games that are absolutely under no circumstances are you gonna be able to enjoy playing this game. And, and this is pretty much how it goes for this game. We're, we're gonna be sitting here for a good little while before we even get to the menu. So I'm not even gonna go much farther than this, but uh, but yeah, now we know this is not this is not a game we can play. So I'm gonna go ahead and press our start and select button and I'm gonna close that content. We're gonna try loading another core. We'll get another game going. Go to our media folder, RA games, PSP. Why don't we try Ape Escape Academy? So another thing that I've noticed is some games, although they may be playable, the audio isn't very good. So you may end up getting choppy audio. Um, you can see that our frames just dropped to 27.9, which isn't great. But yeah, we've got uh, some issues that way where our our audio will not run properly, but the gameplay isn't terrible, it's still playable. So this game actually seems to be running okay. I'm gonna actually try to go ahead and skip into some of the gameplay here. Okay, so the game does seem to be playing fairly well. I've never actually played this game before, and uh, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to like this. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Alright, let's see what this next level is. We can skip this. Jump 
slip and fly and monkey muscle. Slip and fall and monkey tussle. So this game's gonna be very much like a very easy version of Dance Dance Revolution, it seems. Okay, I think I've had enough of this game for now. We're gonna go ahead and try a different game. So again, we just gotta reload our core. And the content. And for this game, I think I'm gonna load up Little Big Planet. Now this game I know runs fairly well. I was playing it a little bit before I made the video and I'm actually really impressed with uh, with this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this load up and why don't, you know, I'm just gonna jump right into the action. All right, so here we are. We can move around. And of course this is the first level so we're gonna be stuck with a lot of tutorial type of things happening, but The gameplay actually feels really good. I don't notice any immediate lag. The audio seems to be playing properly. And if you haven't had a chance to play this game, you're going to want to play this game. It's a great game. This was actually one of my favorite games on PS3 when it, uh, when it had come out. And I'm not noticing actually any graphical issues at all with this. And the game seems to play really well. Yeah, so that's pretty much it, guys. This is how you get your PlayStation Portable games to run on your P PlayStation Classic. Thank you guys very much for watching. Be sure to give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for future videos, make sure you leave those in the comment section below. But other than that, thanks again for watching, and I'll chat with you guys again real soon.